talk about a few verses. Just a few. But y'all are going to talk about it. I want y'all to talk about these verses. God is so good. Get your Bibles out and turn to Proverbs 18 and 21. Proverbs 18 and 21. And when everybody been taught, this can be for everybody. Maybe I can get Eddie, if you would, if you don't mind. Eddie, if you can run the mic back and forth. In case somebody can't hear somebody else. Number 16, Doc. It's also the purple one, I think. Proverbs 18, 21. Check. Ooh, there you go. Proverbs 18, 21. The tongue has the power of life and death. Why? The tongue has the power of life and death. Anybody want to comment on that? The tongue has the power of life and death. Anybody want, anybody want to talk about it? Want to say something? What you speak is what you think. We are what we speak and we are what we eat. We eat the scripture. A lot of have feathers, I'm telling you, because I sure like chicken. <laughs> You're right, sister. You're right. Okay, any more, any more of that? I mean, I got some more scriptures if y'all 
Yes, it is. Very hard to get depression. You have to fight it. But you can, um, let's see. The best way that you can fight it, I think, is with Jesus. Yeah, that's right. That's good. And in the name of Jesus, you can, you can fight it. And if you stay in God's house, That's right. And that, that's the only way I get happy when I'm in church. Oh, yeah, it's awesome. When I stay home and then alone, it gets very down. Oh, yeah, because you think about you think about old things. You think about, you know, I walk in the back of the house and, and there's nothing back there now. And I walk by every now and then I think, I think, wow, Dan used to be here in this room and DC was right here and Bethany was right there. And there was always music playing and there was always stuff going on. And I walk by there, especially if there's nobody there but me, and I walk by and think, wow. You know, it's so easy to get depressed, but then you have to think about it this way. Think about it as going in different seasons. Think about it as going in different seasons, that if you're not going in different seasons, I, 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 honestly, I could not. I couldn't take D.C., Daniel, and Bethany back there now with their families. You know what I'm saying? Could it? Because they've grown and they need their space. And so, so you know, we look at the walls and, you know, mom and pop was there, everybody's staying in the house, but, you know, in reality, families need their own place to grow. So when you think about it, I'm just happy. I think about it, I think, I'm sure it would be cool just sometimes because they should love to be with me and these and Gabby playing and, and Bear would come in and holler, this ain't a honky tonk, turn it down. Bethany's trying to sleep, turn that mess down. We're about to be singing harmony and playing and just having a ball and I didn't pay attention to her. And she was like, I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to cut some strings off some guitars if y'all don't stop. Uh -uh. Yeah. And so it was, just, it was like that all the time. And that, thinking about stuff like that does bring back memory. It makes me smile. But I'd rather have the memories, the good memories, and look forward to even greater memories happening down the road than to sit back and look exactly where I'm at right now and go, man, I wish they were all back here playing and singing and you know, because I had no idea, none, that D.C. was, Dan, I had no idea Dan was, I Dan, I'm going to come help. That I really had no idea D.C. was coming. I had not played with D.C. and Daniel together in 13 years. Wow. And we played together for that thing over there, and that sparked D.C. And from that time on, D.C., I think, was trying to get back here. And so, you know, but, but, but now it's like, wow, it's so awesome. And, that, and it's, it's, uh, uh, again, you got to look forward, not backwards. If you look forward with if you look forward with regret and look forward with dread, then the memories behind you look so great and it clouds ahead of you. You got to look forward with hope and look forward with faith to know that the memories that are going to be up there are going to be just as great. They're going to be different, but they're going to be just as great. Well, now Lisa, she tells me all the time, Mama, look forward. That's don't right. look back. Looking back to hurt you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I mean, she'll get upset with me, and I think she's the best counselor. Yeah. I, I tell you, <laughs> she's, she's working on the end of her master, and um, she's working very, very hard. She did it all by herself. That's awesome. It's like one of the boys in Sunday school, and they said, 
and said, and the teacher said, said, Lot's wife looked back and turned into a pillow of salt. And he said, yeah, my mom looked back and turned into a telephone pole. <laughs> you, know, you know what the famous last words of Lot was before she turned to a pillow of salt? Don't look at the Lord. No, no, said, I think somebody's gaining on us. <laughs> okay, let's go to the next one. Ah, hold on. Okay. What about you, Tim? Tim? Go ahead. Uh, several years ago, a storekeeper was complaining that her business had started dropping off. And she asked Daddy, she said, why is my building business dropping off so bad? People used to come here and, and hang out and spend money and come back in a little while. What, what's happening? Daddy said, Ruth, people come in here right happy and say, how you doing, Ruth? And you tell them. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Quit telling them how bad you feel. And regardless of how bad you feel, when somebody comes in smiling and say, how you doing? Tell them how good you're doing, even if you ain't. In about two weeks, her business picked back up, and she looked at Daddy. Daddy come in the store and said, Edward Burns, I started telling the people I was doing better, and guess what? Not better. I am better. There was a death. That death in life and the power of the tongue calling things that be not as though they were. I ain't sick. I don't get sick. Gets my religion. <laughs> well, I, I, I've heard a doctor say that there was a lady that had been to a bunch of different doctors. They could not seem to cure her. She was, not only was she depressed, but she was just sick. And they couldn't figure it out. And so he said, I'll tell you what I want you to do. Here's my new prescription. There's a new doctor. He said, everyone, when you get up, I want you to thank God. And thank the things to thank him for. And every 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 hour or so, I want you to just thank God for what you got. And come back to see me. She said, that's it. He said, that's it. And she came back. I want you to come back in two weeks and tell me how you're feeling. She drug in the doctor's office and drug out that day thinking, oh, wow. But you know what? When she came back in two weeks, her life, she came in jumping, jumping. She said, life was so awesome. Because she started thanking God for what she had. Here, here's the problem. This is the main problem. Hurt people, H U R T, hurt people, hurt people. So if somebody is hurting, when I had buttons, my little dog buttons, buttons never bit me, never snapped at me except for one time. And that's when I went, that's, all right, that's when I had her fixed when she weren't broken. <laughs> I had her fixed and I reached out to pick her up and I took my finger and went right to the suture and picked her up and she bit me. I don't blame her either. I mean, she didn't bite me hard, but she bit me. And again, there it is, hurt people, hurt people, especially if you touch where they're hurt. So, so you gotta remember that. And so sometimes people are hurting you. They're not hurting you because they're mean. They're not hurting you because they're out to get you. Sometimes they're just hurting you because they hurt. Especially if you happen to hit a place where they're hurting. So, so here, here's number two. Matthew 12, 36. Matthew 12, 36. This one here gets me every time I read it. It makes me want to go back and think and think and think and think what I say. Matthew, Matthew 12, 36. You got to say amen. amen. You don't say amen. amen. Okay. You got it now? Yeah. Okay. Men will have, now, this is tough now. This will preach, but it's tough. I'm telling you, it's about as tough as it comes. But I say to you that every idle word that men shall speak, thou shalt give account of thereof in the day of judgment. Or on that judgment, you're going to have to give account for every idle word inoperative, not working word. And they speak, you say, well that means I can't even joke around, but I, usually joking around if you do it right, it helps lift up people's spirits. And so that's, that's a working word. So, so, so joking around can be work, a working word, or an operative word. I pray word, but I'm talking about stuff that's inoperative, non-working, 
idle words, words also that are negative that kill. And so it's very important that we think about this when we're talking about things. It's so important that, you know what, you may think, I, I, I've, I've had people tell me before, well, I just gave them a piece of my mind, and I said, you couldn't afford to give them a piece of your mind. <laughs> you need every bit you have. You know, well, I just told them what I thought. That's a problem, too. Well, I just told them how it was. Well, you can't tell them how it was because you really don't know. There's only one knows how it was, and that's God. So I'd rather somebody tell me I'm going to tell you how I see it than I'm going to tell you how it was because, honestly, sometimes I thought I saw it one way, and over the years I thought about it. Well, you know what? They were, they were, they were right. You know, so, so that makes me. You might got anything you want to say about that? Go ahead. Um, I, I thought that idle words can be compared to um, weeds growing in pretty flowers. Yeah, that's right. It sure can. Anybody else? Or go to the next one. I'm only going to do a few more, and then we're going to go home. So y'all saying, now don't say anything so little we'll go away. That's idle words. <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway, hey. Uh oh. <laughs> that I've been a, I've been accused of this now Sunday night and today. <laughs> go go ahead. Well, when I got in a vehicle with Miss Helen tonight, she asked how my day was, and I said it was terrible. Um, just had a bad day. I was got mad right to start with. Had a meeting. We have a supervisor's meeting on Tuesdays, and I appeared he got mad right to start with. And it wasn't good the rest of the day. And um, I was meeting with another lady near the end of the day. Our building's being under construction. And we've had to deal with construction workers for about 18 months. And I'll be honest, I am sick of construction workers. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure they hurt us. <laughs> but um, I was meeting with another lady in, in my office. I had my door shut. And generally when you have a door shut, if you go into a room, you would knock yes. or, you know, kind of peek your head in. But I'm talking with another supervisor and this construction worker just walks in the door. And I'm like, okay, I've had a bad day. And you just bounce in the door and I'm like, what are you doing? He comes out very quickly. And I'm like, okay, I'm already mad. I'm already in a bad mood. And I go to another room and I'm like, I can't believe this guy just walked in my room and didn't. And one of the other girls said, well, what would you have done if you had changed clothes? Or changing clothes? And I happened to say, <laughs> <laughs> something stupid. Get ready to leave, and then I walk out the door, and there he is. And I'm like, Oh my god, he's heard everything else. He's heard everything I said. And I mean, I was, I didn't say anything inappropriate, but it's not something that I was proud of. <laughs> and I'm like, One, I'm a Christian, two, I'm a supervisor, three, I'm a female. You know, I, I don't want to be that way, and then I'm in front of my girls and yeah. I'm like okay God tag you got me <laughs> I'm like okay tag you got me you were at work he got me and I'm like thank you <laughs> I, I remember I was at fountain and at fountain I was always I could always keep my cool I mean it was just it was, the Lord was just amazing I could keep my cool and one day one day Daniel was working over in service and warranty over with the racing team and the supervisor was having a bad day. And so the supervisor started running his mouth to everybody. And then he got to Daniel. And he <laughs> said something to Daniel. Of course, Daniel may have overemphasized it, but he said something like, you're not going to amount to anything. And that made me so mad. And so my group had always seen me be Dr. Cool. Saw me get up and close my books. 
And I said, I'm going to go down and we're going to have a little meeting. And they said, what is it? And I said, I'm going to teach somebody how to talk to somebody. And they said, David, this is not the way you do things. I said, it is today. <laughs> and they said, you're just upset because it's your boy. I said, well, that's got a lot to do with it. I said, well, people don't even, I, I, I would get aggravated if you told anybody that, but especially my boy, they said, David, it's hitting you. I mean, I, I thought about it, and I said, now I'm really looking bad. You know, and so I said, you're right. I took a deep breath, and I prayed about it, and then you go down there. The next time I saw him was like the next day, that guy, I told Daniel, suck it up and keep moving forward. It's going to be okay. And, and of course, him and Daniel got a little fight after that. They had more problems. But that one day, that guy would hurt people, hurt people. Okay. Okay, watch this. Proverbs 13 and 3. Proverbs 13 and 3. See, this all goes in this all goes in order. Proverbs 13 and 3. This actually, this is off the cuff tonight, but that's okay. We're having a good time. It's working. Proverbs 13 and 3. Proverbs 13 and 3. You got to say amen. You don't say on me. Okay. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. Wow. In other words, he that keeps his mouth under control. I know nobody in here except me and Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> I think it on yourself, man. Because I, 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 that's why I told my story after this. You know, all of us are guilty of it. Yeah. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. You know, you may be thinking about the time that, that when I, I was just bought a wireless mic and they weren't even doing all that great. It was a Mickey Mouse one from, that just came out with them and and I, and, I, and I had gone over to the church, I put the little panel mic on, clipped it on, and I walked over to the parsonage. Everything was off at the church. Somebody came into church and saw that the, the sound system was not on, so they turned it on. I did not know my mic was on. And I'm sitting in there, and I'm doing the final preparation, you know, whatever I was doing, combing my hair or something, and D.C. comes barging in the door. And his mom was dressing and, I, and of course, she was dressed. She was just buttoned up. And I said, and I hollered, I won't do it now because I got a microphone on. I hollered, boy, get out of here. Can't you see your mama's naked? <laughs> and it went all over the church. Oh, no. <laughs> so when I walked over to the church, everybody's just laughing. And I go, what are y'all laughing about? And they said, DC and his mama. <laughs> Again. <laughs> yeah. He that keepeth his mouth keeps his life, but he that opens while wide his lips shall have destruction. Or he who guards his mouth keeps his life, but he who opens wide his lips comes to ruin. And think about this. I always talk about this when I tell somebody, I'm trying to find out something. They say, would you find out? It's no, because they were keeping their cards close to their chest. A poker player, a good poker player will take his cards and he'll hold it or to his vest, they said to his vest or chest. He holds his cards like this, so you can't see them. And that expression now is turned up people when you're trying to talk to them about something. They're keeping their cards so tight, you can't, you really can't. They got that poker face on, so you can't read them. And, and, and there's times where you need to keep your cards close and keep on the poker face. Because you never know when the person that's talking to you without even realizing it is going to be used by Satan. Satan uses Christians. Every day. To tell the wrong person the wrong thing. And start problems. So that's why I'm always careful what I say. I try to think of what I say. We should all be that way. Think of what you're saying. Think about what you're, who you're saying it to. And I tell you, I can tell you, I can't even count on my hands and feet, my toes. How many times somebody said, oh, Pastor, I don't need you to tell anybody about this. I'm just telling you so you can pray. Please don't tell a soul. Okay. And come into church and be told by 12 people on the way up. Oh, yeah. So what they've done is they've told those other people too. 
Don't tell anybody, don't tell anybody nothing. And I tell them, look, if you want, the only way you can keep, look, this is, now I'm gonna sound like I can't keep a secret, but I don't mean this way, but it's an old saying, the only way to keep a secret between two people is if one of them's dead. <laughs> okay? I can keep a secret, I know y'all can keep a secret, but I'm just saying there's an old saying, and it's got a lot of truth to it. Okay? Uh, James 3. James 3, verse 7. James 3, we're almost through. Got two more, and we'll be out of here. James 3. James chapter 3. James is the New Testament book of Proverbs. Did you know that? Hebrews is the New Testament book of Leviticus. James chapter 3 verse 7. For every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue, wow. I mean, they train elephants. They train fleas or flea circuits. They've trained all kinds of animals. I've seen some of the wildest things where people have tamed these things. It says, but the tongue no man can tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. But the human tongue can be tamed by no man. It is restless, undisciplined, irreconcilable, evil, full of deadly poison. Therefore we bless God the Father, and therefore we curse men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessings and cursings. My brother, these things ought not to be, though the fountain send forth the same place sweet water and vinegar. Can a fig tree, my brother, bear olive berries, or either a vine figs? So can no fountain but yield salt water and fresh. We ought to think about this stuff when we find ourselves wanting to get naked. Because it's very possible to have a very positive spirit and get negative over something. And, and, and there are certain people I expect to hear negative from. I mean, some folks find fault so much you think they got paid for it. Some folks love negative and want for negative. They couldn't live, I don't think. But the people that are positive, the people that are full of faith, usually the faithful people, people that are actually living by faith are the positive people. If the positive person has a bad day, you can really tell it. If a negative person has a bad day, so they're just being theirself. And if they have a really, really good day, you really, honestly, can't, you just get surprised that they said something positive. But what I'm saying is, they don't come out the same fountain. So it's cool to be thinking about this. God, help my fountain not to be bitter. Help me not to say negative things. It's easier if somebody asks you something. You heard me say it before. It's all in how you say it. If your wife says, how do I look? And you say, honey, when I see your beauty, time stands still. Wow. I can say the same thing in a different way. Honey, you got looks that will stop at 8 o'clock. I said the same thing, but a different way. It's all how you say it. Okay? Think about it before you talk. I always try my best. I don't always succeed. Sometimes you get bombarded and you get bombarded by so many people you can't stop and think. But stop and think. Am I getting ready to put a negative snowball in motion? One word, one wrong word can start a little snowball that grows so big it winds up taking out you can take out a whole congregation. One word. One word spoken at the wrong time can really be terrible. So I say, God, help me. 
Help me to bring out good stuff. Help me to bring it out. You know, uh, I remember every day, I used to take my boys to school in the morning when I could, and I'd, and I'd ride the bus home in the afternoon when we were busy. And every morning we prayed, and I knew we pray, I told them that they were built by God to make a difference. And I told them that every day. And I told them they were going to make a difference. And I just refused to leave them off going to school with bad feelings. I would always tell them, I love you, buddy. We pray. And God's got you here for a reason. And you get out and, and, and show what, what God can do with you. Now, I've taken the Emmy to school a lot this year because they all these two-hour delays. And the first time I took Emmy to school, I put my hand right there and she gave me five. And I said, no, Emmy, I'm going to pray with you. And she said, okay, Paul. Now when I take her to school, I put my hand back, she goes ahead and grabs it and get ready to go. You know, uh, and, and I tell her, Emmy, you were made to make a difference today. Go do it. Again, it's important, it's so important that we let this fresh stuff come out of our mouth, the sweet stuff and not the bitter. Because bitter is there. Everybody's got bitter. If you don't think you got bitter, everybody's got bitter. But it's our decision how we use it. Amen. Then finally, here's the last one. And then we're gonna we're gonna pray if you leave. Proverbs 25 and 15. Proverbs 25 and 15. Proverbs is the Old Testament book of Proverbs. <laughs> Proverbs. This here, <coughs> I picked these out while y'all were singing. Because it just looked like they all just went right in order so awesomely. So Proverbs 25 and 15. By long forbearance, a prince is persuaded and a soft tongue breaketh the bone. Or here it goes. By long forbearance and calmness of spirit, a judge or a ruler is persuaded. In soft speech, breaks down the most bone-like resistance. Wow. My daddy used to tell me all the time, you can get a whole lot more with sugar than you can with whatever else he would name off. And sometimes you didn't use that expression in sentence. Be impatient and being soft spoken, you can you can win a whole lot more battles. Then they come jump on somebody and try to beat them into, into submission. I don't like being. I don't like people trying to beat me into submission. But if somebody tries to beat me into submission, you can forget it. If somebody comes in and they're patient and they give me a chance to think, that's where you got to be patient. That's what it means when you're being patient, soft spoken. You're giving that person a chance to think. Plus, you're influencing them with with. Uh, Opportunity before them, you're not beating them into submission. All right? Uh, on the TV um, court shows, mm -hmm. Judge Judy, etc., if you'll notice, the people that she, they're judging between, the one with the bad attitude always loses. Yeah, that worked it up. Yeah, how that working out for you? <laughs> yeah, bad to the tough. And, and uh, I, I was telling, and I've told you this before, but I was telling this to somebody the other day. They were talking about someone. They were talking about how bad they were treated at work over something. And I said I was sitting at the table with all the managers at family, and we were setting a report on what we were doing. And my project was not completed. And it was behind. I was industrial engineering. The uh, military and fishboat engineer, he was the one holding me up. He just kept pushing me to the back burner. I said, I got things gotta get done. He said, mine's coming first, I don't care, blah, blah, blah. I mean, he didn't just, he didn't just 
not do it, he treated me bad about it. So I'm sitting there in this big old meeting with all the management. And, you, and here's what you hear every time. They would start, it, nobody took any responsibility. Everybody always blamed everybody else. Always. And so, uh, uh, even Mr. Fountain, I think, I, this is probably the same day Mr. Fountain started talking, and the other engineer's name was David, my name was David. So Mr. Fountain starts saying David, David, and talks, and I don't pay attention. He finally says, your name is David, isn't it? And the other David slapped me on the shoulder, so I think he's talking to you. I said, okay. And so we get talking about this project, and I'm way behind because of him. And I would have been all dead to right if I said, well, if he'd hurry up, we could do something. But I didn't. I said, Lord, here's my chance to make a difference. And so I just said, yep, we're behind. Ran into some snags. Didn't do this either. <laughs> Wanted to. Ran into some snags. And I'm sorry. Please forgive me. And when I said that, I'm like, I kid you not, everybody got quiet at that table. Everybody. Nobody said a word. And I kept wondering, what's going on now? Because, <laughs> you know, Mr. Mount was in the fire mood that day, and I'm thinking, well, you know, I just apologized, said I was sorry. When I could have said it's his fault. He, he's even looking at me, knowing that he'd done it. And finally, the vice president engineer for the rep man said, we forgive you. And said, move on. And so they went back around the table. And everybody was just amazed that somebody took responsibility, you know what I'm saying? Not place blame. It was just awesome. And so uh, and I didn't know what was going to happen. I knew what was going to happen when I did it. I just knew that I was not going to throw him under the bus like he was already throwing me because two, two wrongs don't make a right. Although I was wearing another, this is my almost white shirt. I was wearing a white shirt in the, in the Chinese restaurant last night. And drop some of that red sauce up here. And I asked the waitress, could she get me two wongs? And she said, two what? I said, two wongs. And they said, two wongs. I said, yeah, have you heard two wongs make a white? <laughs> <laughs> no, they just kept going on. I had to get my, I had to get my cup and drop my, my, my napkin in my cup and try to... <laughs> I was going to the hospital. I don't want to go to the hospital with a red here. You're going to think, you've been shocked. Go get somebody called Red Skin Squad. All right. Which didn't work? It, the, the walks didn't work with that. Either. That water worked, yes. The water got it mostly off. It got off enough that nobody knows when I got to the hospital. Okay, let's pray, y'all. Father, you're an awesome God. You're a powerful God. Lord, I know God and everybody in this church. Everybody I know of, everybody, whether they're kinfolk, in-laws, outlaws, whatever, they're all going through struggles. Life is a struggle. I know, God, there's a lot of hurt people out there, and the hurt people are hurting people who don't even realize it. So Father, I ask you right now, Lord, to touch us right now, Lord. We may not can stop it. But we, can, we can't stop the output or the input, but we can change the output. We can't necessarily stop what's coming our way, but we can change the way we handle it, which in turn will even affect the people that are dishing it out. Lord, help us to guard our mouths. It's an ongoing process. It's an ongoing battle. We all fight it every day. Father, I ask you for strength, wisdom, and understanding. Help us take your word and hold on to it. And know that you got our back, Lord. You got this. We trust you for it, Lord. Right now, in the name of Jesus and God's people said, Amen. 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 Y'all get ready for guess what Sunday is. Easter. Amen. I told y'all one time before Jack here about me, I ran over to Easter. I ran over Easter Bunny. I was riding down the road, ran over Easter Bunny, little Easter Bunny, and my grandbaby started crying. Papa, you killed the Easter Bunny. And I said, and so I said, hold on, I got this. And I pulled out and I got, 
and people would come around and see what was going on. I went out and I got this can out in the back of my car and I sprayed it. And then somebody jumped up, looked at me, and started hopping off. And as it hopped off, every time it would hop off, it would stop after about three or four foot and would wave at me and hop on, turn around and wave at me and hop on until I finally went out of sight. And I said, that is amazing. I said, why is that stuff in that can? I said, it's nothing wrong. I said, it's nothing spectacular. I said, I went to Walmart. And I said, I just got my wife a can of hairspray. It says, adds life to, to dead limb hair, adds permanent weight. <laughs> God is good. All the time. Thank you, Lord. Help us go out and do what we're supposed to do. In the name of Jesus.